let me know when like give me a cue okay this is sunday morning normally we will be in the edifice getting ready to fellowship and praise our father with songs but because of the pandemic we have decided to just uh, give you a word from the Lord from my home. But before we get into the word of God, um, those of you who have stopped by the building to pick up your communion cups, we would like to uh, take our communion at this time. You who are at home can participate. And um, I don't know if you know this song, but I'd like to at least sing one verse and um, before we take the Lord's Supper. And this song is called Lead Me to Calvary. We're just going to sing one verse. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Oh, lest I forget thy throne crown brow. Lead me to Calvary. Oh, lest I forget Gethsemane. Oh, lest I forget thy agony. Lest I forget thy love. And that is where the song was trying to reflect for us our Lord dying on a hill called Calvary for our sins. Before we partake in Matthew 26, a very familiar text, in verse 26, the Bible says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and, break, and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. We would like to go to the Father now and thank him for blessing this memorial that we can remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, as always, we humbly come before your throne of grace to thank you, Father, for so many of our blessings. But we are just coming right now to thank you for this memorial that represents your son, his body and his blood that was shed for the remission of our sins and sealed us to be a member of your new covenant. We are thankful for it. And even though the world is going through so many things right now, but we are so happy that we can reflect and find time to partake of this communion with one another. Forgive us for our sin. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now my son Josiah is going to uh, instruct you how to go through and take the Lord's Supper. What we have been doing is that we have one uh, particular uh, cup. First we take the bread. And then also we take the fruit of the vine. Now, if we were at the edifice at this time, of course, surely you would, uh, we'll be taking our normal collection, but we're just going to encourage you that the kingdom business must continue. And we want to encourage you to give on our online app, or you can mail in your giving, or you can stop by the building next Saturday and leave it with someone who will be there. God bless you. And now we're going to get into our word in just a few minutes.
Amen, amen, amen. Now, I'm at my home. I'm at my home. And we decided to just stay here and do the message right from my home. I hope and pray that you are getting your Bible. I hope and pray that you are getting your, your, your Bible. And, and uh, while you are getting your Bible, uh, we might want to sing one more song. And that song is just to give you time <laughs> to get your Bible and get ready. Now, this song here, we're just going to sing one verse. And you may say, Brother Haywood, wow, you know, where's your normal song leader? Well, he's not here <laughs> because we are just in my home and we are trying to not uh, assemble uh, a lot of people that uh, might be outside. We are trying to keep the crowd limited and we thought this was the safest way to do it. It's just with my family. Now, I don't know if you know this song, but you probably know this song. It's, on, it's, uh, it's, it's called When Morning Comes. When Morning Comes. And we're going to sing one verse, open up with a word of prayer, and then we are going to get into the word. We're going to get into the word. Uh, my son is still here. We're going to ask him to come and open up the prayer for us in a, just a few minutes after we sing the song. He's going to open up a prayer, and then we will... Get into the word. We get into the word. This song is, is uh, entitled When Morning Comes. Trials are dark on every hand And we cannot understand All the ways that God will lead us To that blessed promised land But we'll guide us with his eyes And we'll follow till we die uh, we will understand it better by and by. You know by and by. I know now when the morning comes. Uh, you know that all the saints of God will and we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of the things that life demands. Want of shelter and of food, thirsty hills and barren land. But we are trusting in the Lord. And according to his word, uh, we will understand it better by and by. Now, children, by, by and by, I know now when the morning comes. Uh, you know that all the saints of God are gathering home and we will tell the story I know how. We overcome, we will understand it better by and by. A temptation hid in snares often take us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed for each thoughtless word of deed. And we wonder why the test. When we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. Now, children, by and by, I know when the morning comes, you know that all the saints of God are gathering home, and we will tell the story. I know how. We overcome, uh, we will understand it better by and by. I was supposed to sing one verse, but my wife is over here telling me to keep going. <laughs> so we some free verses. So we're going to ask my son Josiah to come forward, and go to the throne for us, and then we'll get into the word. Yeah, Josiah. Good morning, church. Let's go to prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you for this day. 
we thank you for blessing all who are able to tune in and still be alive and breathing and we just pray that we continue to understand your will and continue to walk in faith and continue to stay strong during these troubling times We'd like to pray for all those who are affected by the virus right now friends and family and just continue to pray for us to stay strong uh, praying for all those that are sick and shut in and in jesus name we pray amen okay we thank my son for that prayer now i want you to turn and meet me at a familiar psalms i want this turn to psalms 23. psalm 23. You know, I was thinking about what to preach for today, and I think it was good for me to revisit a text that I have used so many times. We read this text normally at funerals, and, but this text has another message in it that I believe is apropos for us at this time because of the pandemic. A virus that is um, uh, bringing death and sickness throughout the world. Now in Psalm 23, I want you to meet me there. Psalm 23. Now this psalm is written by David and um, I want to read it. And after I read it, I want to uh, let you know that there's no way I can preach the entire psalm in one sitting. But what we are going to do is probably just preach a couple of verses and see if we can make some applications to our lives. Okay, Psalm 23. Very familiar text. Follow along with me wherever you are. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Last verse, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a psalm, right? Now, what I want to do is that in these trying times, brethren, we need to have an encouraging word from the Lord. And I want you to see that before we deal with this psalm, now, when I preached it the first time, I just entitled it, The Lord is My Shepherd. But that's the umbrella. But under that umbrella, I want you to have as a theme for this morning, The Lord is My Provider. The Lord is My Provider. And when you look at how the Psalms is placed in the Bible, I want you to first look at Psalm 22, because in Psalm 22, David is really going through something. He's going through some suffering. And if you look at verse number one, he says a, a statement that our Lord Jesus is going to say on Calvary. He says, my God and my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Here is David going through something with God. But brethren, to get to know God, uh, you can get to know him better if you go through something, if you're in a valley. Because he's going to show you his power. He's going to show you some things that you need to know about him that when you come through the valley, you will be able to say, as David said in the affirmative, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But he went through something. Is that not right? Now, in Psalm 22, you also notice in the same Psalms, in Psalm 22, 22, he says, I will declare 
thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation I will praise thee. Now he moved from suffering and trying to praise. And that's why when you see him in Psalm 23, he can make that statement, the Lord is my shepherd. Now for us, who is our shepherd? Are you under his care? Now I'm so thankful that I can say like David, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. And I believe that when you look at the New Testament, Jesus is the, the shepherd for us ultimately in the New Testament. In John 10, and the verse is number 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. So what David was saying in the Old Testament, you could say, ultimately, Jesus was going to become the good shepherd. See, they had, good, they had shepherds in the Old Testament, but they weren't good shepherds, generally speaking. So Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. They had a vine in the Old Testament, but Jesus said, I am what? The true vine. So I want to look at this particular text this morning. I won't be long. And I just want to see if we can glean some points from it that will reveal to us why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now we need to see something about Jesus that can make you or motivate you to want to come under his care. In Psalms 100, before we get to our text, in Psalms 100, we will notice that Jesus has creative power. This shepherd that David refers to and in the New Testament, Jesus, who is our shepherd, watch what it says. In Psalms 100, in verse number 3, it expresses that the, sh that the shepherd <coughs> excuse me, has creative power. How about give me a, a, a glass of water? <clears throat> in Psalm 100, verse number 3, Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Watch what it says. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So the psalmist says, God made us, this shepherd made us. We are the sheep of his pasture. So therefore, when you look at, at, at this particular shepherd, he can create. As a matter of fact, he created Everything. He created everything. In Psalms, I want you to see this in Psalms 19. If you have your Bibles, we got time. We got time. In Psalms 19, meet me at Psalms 19 in just a few minutes and look at verse number one. In Psalm 19, verse number one, I'm going to read it out of the uh, New Living Translation, okay? <clears throat> and the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. They speak about, I mean, they speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from his heat. Isn't that a beautiful psalms? I mean, I'm telling you, God created 
the earth, the heavens, us, and everything speaks in its own language. All, you, all we must do is just look at the universe and we can see intelligence. It wasn't a big bang. It was somebody said, let there be. And there was. And if we are going to make the Lord our shepherd, you must understand he has some credentials. He is first, cre he has creative power. Not only that, I believe the great man Job, in Job 26, I can't read all of it, but in Job 26, I want you to read it on your own time in verse number 7. And you can continue to about verse number 14. I'm going to give you a, 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 just, just a few seconds to find that text. Because I want you to see who David is saying the Lord is. <laughs> Before he can say the Lord is his shepherd. He knows something about God. And we need to know something about God. Who is our shepherd? And believe me, I believe that Jesus is God totally. I believe he came as a man totally. And I believe he's my shepherd. I believe he's my shepherd. I believe he's my provider. So in Job 26, verse number 7, God stretches the northern sky over empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. Man, that's shouting. Shouting time. Our world rotate on his axis and it's on nothing. But the power of God, the intelligence of God, has made our world, and brethren, it operates. Because God made it to operate on his own natural laws. Watch verse 8 of, of Job 26. He wraps the rain <laughs> in his thick clouds, and the clouds don't burst with the weight. He covers the face of the moon. Shrouding it with his clouds, he created the horizon when he separated the waters. He set the boundary between day and night. The foundation of heaven trembled. They shudder at his rebuke. By his power, the sea grew calm. By his skill, he crushed the earth sea monster. His spirit made the heavens beautiful and the power pierced the gliding serpent. These are just the beginning of all that he does. Merely a whisper of his power. Who then can comprehend the thunder of his power? I mean, that's enough. For, I don't even need to say anything else. Why David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And if you're here, the question on the floor is, what about you? Is he your shepherd? How can you come under his care? What about you? David is speaking from a sheep point of view. Right? He is saying, I am a sheep. And I have a shepherd. And I believe that in this Psalms, God is going to reveal numerous names. Which will give a snapshot. Of his character and his abilities. And you'll see why David is saying the Lord is my shepherd. Now we are in a crisis. But David is saying you are not the only one that has ever experienced a crisis. David is saying that the success of going through a crisis is the knowledge of knowing and the faith that believing. That God is in control. He's your shepherd. And he'll take care of you. He owns me. He leads me. He's my master. That is the idea when you say the Lord is my shepherd. Now I believe we are ready to peel a few. To glean a few principles from the text. First of all, he said the Lord is my shepherd. Now, there are just only two Greek, I mean, uh, Hebrew words that makes up this statement. The Lord, the 
self-existing one, Jehovah. And then he adds on there shepherd, which is roha, the uh, Hebrew word. So it's really Jehovah, roha. Jehovah is my shepherd. I believe that we must understand that David knows that God has plans for him. He will protect him. He will guide him. God is responsible. The shepherd is responsible for the pasture. He is responsible for the shelter. He is responsible to protect. He is responsible to feed. Brethren, he's responsible to God. That's what a shepherd is supposed to do. And David says, he is my Jehovah Roha. He is my shepherd. And I believe that you find that God has shown in the Old Testament, and David is aware of the history, that God is one who have led his people all the way out of Egypt through the wilderness, took them and he led them with a pillar of fire and a pillar of, of cloud. When, 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 when the Egyptians wanted to attack, it would move to the rear and no one could pass that particular embankment that God set up to protect his people. So God has a history of really are, are protecting people and guiding people just like sheep we go astray unfortunately just like sheep no matter how God has been good to us we go astray the Bible says in Isaiah 53 in the verses number 6 all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. The question is, are you under his care? Do you know you have gone astray? And I want you to see that you can come under his care if you will take heed to what he's going to tell us to do in order for God to become your shepherd. And I'm talking about Jesus. So God did this and he led his people all through the Old Testament and he wants us today to come under his care. Now you may say to yourself, well I tell you what, I've done a pretty good job in my life. Jeremiah said, oh Lord I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not within man that walketh to direct his own step. Jeremiah 10, 23. So I don't care how good you think you are. You are not good enough to live a life that you will say to yourself, you don't need the Lord as your shepherd. I'm telling you, we all need the Lord as our shepherd. So David has experienced God. And he has come to the conclusion that God is his shepherd. Now, secondly, he makes this statement, I shall not want. Mm. Brother Haywood, are you telling me that David is saying that he never got into a position that he was not in need or want? No, I'm not saying that. What that statement really means is that he's not lacking in proper care. Just because you go through different trials does not mean that God is not caring and providing for you. God is, David is saying that I believe that whatever valley I go through, whatever crisis I experience, I have faith that God will properly care for me and provide for me that whatever happens, I know he has made the right choice. I shall not want. 
Because, brethren, there are many uh, uh, people in the Bible, godly people, that has experienced want. But their faith in God is saying, he's properly caring for me. Now, in the Old Testament, of course, one of the prime uh, 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 people in the Bible, we, we would probably think of Abraham. Is that right? Oh, Abraham. Abraham, you know, God called Abraham because he was going to start uh, 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 getting his people together from the seed of Abraham. And you will remember, I do believe, that God called Abraham in uh, Genesis chapter 12. You know, he went down into Egypt, made him without asking God. And God came down in there and blessed him and brought a plague on the king of Israel there and um, brought him out of Egypt you know, and um, gave him more than what he went in with, you know, uh, he's just properly caring for Abraham. And then Abraham later on, God promised him a son, gave him a son. Now watch this. And if you see what God did as Abraham to do, you would be very surprised. Abraham is represented a typology. He is a type of showing you how God provides. The anti-type would be Jesus on Calvary showing us how God provides. Watch this. He tells Abraham, I want you to offer your son as a burnt sacrifice. Is that not right? Now, I'm in chapter 22 of the book of Genesis. And if you notice, in chapter 22, Abraham, you know the story, Abraham goes there and he raises that particular knife to kill his son. His son had even said to him, he says, I see the fire, I see the wood. He says, where is the sacrifice? So Abraham said in Genesis 22, in verse number 8, he said, God will provide him a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. He got ready to kill his son. The angel said, no, do the lad, the lad no harm. What did God do? He saw in the thicket, a lamb for the sacrifice. I shall not want. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah provides. I have faith that whatever predicament I find myself in, the Lord is my shepherd. It is his responsibility to protect me and provide for me. I shall not want whatever happens. I know his care is the best care for my life. Even if he asks me to sacrifice something in my life, I believe is the best thing for me to do. So if you're here, this crisis that we are going through, people are dying every day. And you might ask yourself a question, why? Ours is not to know why. Ours is to have faith that God is on the throne, that God knows what he's doing. And ours really is to say, I hope not just me, not just the church, but the entire world will learn what God wants us to learn. That the eyes of our heart will be enlightened that we can comprehend from this crisis what God wants us to do. I believe when the time is right, my hope says God would providentially step in that we can have an end 
to this virus because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So therefore, you will see that God blessed Abraham. He is a good example to show that God provides for his people. In Deuteronomy 2 and verse number 6, watch this. For the Lord thy God have blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these 40 years. The Lord thy God has been with thee. Thou has lacked, watch what he said, nothing. Deuteronomy 2 and verse number 7. In other words, uh, uh, Moses is reflecting on what God has done for his people. Did, did some people die? Yes. Did some people complain? Yes. Was God providing for them? Yes. Did many of them turn their back on him and wanted to give the glory to a golden calf? Yes. But God brought them out and Deuteronomy 2 7 says they lack nothing <clears throat> because they were under the care of God. God gave them bread from heaven, water from a rock, sweet and bitter waters, whale, I mean, uh, uh, quails came to give them meat, and whatever they wanted uh, uh, might not have been the best thing for them, but at the right time, because God was a good shepherd, He gave them what was best for them. And God will do today what's best for us. As we try to look at this particular psalm, I want you to also keep in mind, right now, uh, 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 those rich, those who are rich among us, amen, that can't even protect them. Your money can't protect you. This virus is indiscriminate. This virus can hit anybody. And let me tell you something. The people who have all of this money, please don't ever think God blessing them. That's not an indication of God blessing. Don't think because other people have less money that the shepherd is not caring for them. No, 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 church. I would, David is not talking materialistically here. Not only, right? It, it, it's not only uh, uh, physically he's talking about God caring for him. He's also talking about spiritually. Watch this. In Revelations 3, in the verses number 7, the Bible says, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Just because you're rich does not mean that you are being blessed by God. The poorest man in the world can be blessed by God if the Lord is his shepherd. God will care for you. Many people want the blessing of God. They want uh, the uh, eternal life, but they are so wrapped up into materialistic things that they're unwilling to part with. You remember the, uh, 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 the rich young ruler we call him, right? In Mark 10, 21. Oh, he wanted eternal life. He, uh, uh, Jesus said, go in and now uh, keep the law. He said, I've done all these things from my youth. But Jesus said, go sell what you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. And he went away sad. Just because you're rich don't mean you have all the blessings of God. David is saying, not just materialistically, David is saying spiritually. The Lord is his shepherd. Let me try to finish this thing. So now the Lord Jesus Christ is our provider. And brethren, I believe every child of God should be able to say, I shall not want. Now, 
Lord Jesus Christ. I say it's our provider. In Philippians 4.19, I believe he'll provide all our needs. He says, but my God shall supply all your need according to the riches of his glory by Jesus Christ. You know what he's saying? The church is supposed to be able to give for the furtherance of the ministry of God's kingdom. And Paul is saying through the Holy Spirit, don't you ever think that you can give so much to God that you will be lacking. Paul is saying God will give you and supply you in the abundance according to his riches. He's so rich. Don't you ever think you can outgive him and don't you ever think because you give to him that he's not caring for you. So Paul says, he shall supply all your needs. All your needs. He will provide your need. He provides you with companionship. You know, right now, uh, we are trying to call those who live by themselves. Having someone there who's physical. But let me, let me be clear. There's not a child of God. There's not a faithful child of God that doesn't have the companionship of God. No, 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 no. I believe that Jesus and I have said to us that he'll never leave us. Look at Hebrews. 13.5. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. My shepherd provides my needs. My shepherd provides my companionship. If all in the world leave you, Paul says, I know that the Lord will stand by me. He provides the strength and refuge in my trials. In Philippians 4, 13, that's why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. In 2 Corinthians 12, 10, he says, therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in my reproaches, in my necessities, in, in persecution and distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I'm weak, then am I strong. Brethren, we are in a crisis. But you remember this. If he's your shepherd, he provides all your needs. If he's your shepherd, he'll provide your companionship. If he's your shepherd, he'll give you strength and refuge in your trials. If he's your shepherd, he provides the way of salvation and victory. In John 14, verse number 6, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except by me. If he's your shepherd, we can make that affirmation statement, he's my shepherd. But if he's not your shepherd, if, he, if you are not under his care, he says you can't come to the Father except by me. Don't you want Jesus to be your provider? Don't you want him to be your shepherd? I believe before I close, I will give you instructions how you can uh, go to Jesus and he can become your shepherd. Last but not least, he provides rest. Oh, he provides rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly of heart. You shall find what? Rest for your soul. Oh, my shepherd. I love my shepherd. He just provides rest for me. I believe that he says, if you want to come to him, you must deny yourself. In this crisis, I'm not nervous. No, 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 no. I'm not nervous because I believe and I'm not even fearful 
Now, I'm doing everything they tell me to do to stay safe. But I'm not fearful. I'm not depressed. I, I, I don't have any anxiety. No, 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 no. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He provides rest for me. He provides me with everything I need in this crisis. So I believe that Jehovah Jireh is, was David's provider, and he's my provider. And he's all Christian provider. He knows the future. He knows when this virus will be brought under control. He knows when we will, when we will all be called back to work. He knows when he will, that, 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 that he, will he will allow the great numbers once again to fellowship in the edifice. He knows the Lord will take care. I know he'll take care of me. He's my Lord. He's my shepherd. He's my provider. Who do I have to fear? Because he has not given us the spirit of fear. No, 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 no. Power and love. If you're here, as I try to close this thing, don't worry. Just be concerned. He is the God of peace. He is the God that's our shepherd. He can be peace in the middle of a storm. He can be, he can be your bridge in the middle of troubled waters. We need to remember that what we read and teach and sing, brethren, let that thing be revealed in the way we live. In 1 Peter 5 and verse number 4, the Bible says, And when the chief shepherd, here he is, shall appear, Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Oh, what a God I serve. I know there are many of you out there that lost family members, you lost friends. I know that. But the child of God has to have faith that he has a shepherd that will provide, protect, and guide. And for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. I hope and pray that we'll be encouraged that you need to have faith in God. Now, do you want to come under his care? Because all we like sheep have gone astray. Do you want to come beneath its care. But I'll tell you what. You need to obey the gospel. Quite simply. I never bring any message but God tell me how to be saved. <laughs> Amen. You know what I mean? And Jesus have already provided everything we need to be saved. In 1 Peter 1 in the verses number 18 the Bible says for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received from a, by the tradition from your fathers. Money, money, money won't help you when it comes down to becoming a Christian. No, 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 no. You can't buy your way in. No, 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 no. But with the precious blood of Christ, he says, as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Price paid. Without money, without gold. What do you need? You need faith first. You need to believe that Jesus is God. Jesus is God's son, sent here to die for you. You need to believe that. And if you can believe that, that is because what you were taught from his word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to believe he is God. You also need to believe that you are a sinner. Paul says, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And you got paid. Is that not right? You got paid in Romans 6, 23. For the wages of, of, of sin is what? Death. You got paid when you have sinned. But I'm glad it doesn't end there. But he said the gift. 
of God is eternal life. Don't you want to uh, have a life with God forever one day? So if you can believe that you are a sinner, he's the son of God, make up in your mind you're going to give him your life and repent of your sin. You're not going to st still live the same way you used to live. You're going to have to deny some things if you want to follow Jesus. And then confess his sweet name, that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then be baptized. That's the culminating act to get into Jesus. And that is to be baptized. If Paul did it, the Philippian jailer did it, if, if, if those at Pentecost did it, if Lydia did it, if all those people got baptized, if the Ethiopian eunuch did it, they became Christian. What makes you think you can pray your way in or say some little poem? No. Believe the word. And if God spare your life, the first opportunity you get, find yourself a church of Christ, amen, and be buried in the water of the grave of baptism. God bless you for being with me this morning. Now I'm looking for you next Sunday because we haven't finished the Psalms. We are going to see when he leadeth me beside still waters, he restored my soul. He leads me on the path of wrath for his name's sake. We got a ways to go. And by the time I get through with this series, I hope you can say the Lord is my shepherd. He's my provider. God bless you. I'll see you next Sunday. I hope and pray that if you have any questions, please feel free to call the church number. That number is 718-337-5102. Have a good day.